Hello, welcome to morebikes.co.uk. This is the latest update in my life with this, my Triumph long term for 2016. This is the Triumph Speed Triple 1050R, the highest spec of the Speed Triples that you can get in the current range. The R gets the Olin suspension, the Brembo brakes, it's just a bit sharper as a package. Uh, what's the purpose of this update? Basically just to take you through the bits that we've had put on the bike. Um, you may notice there's a few additions like the tape um, on the frame, uh, something wedged in here, we'll get to all that in a moment, but just basically to bring you up to speed with where we are with life with the Triumph. Well, what I wanted to do with the bike was do it in two parts, uh, effectively I wanted to upgrade it, for want of a better word, on the performance side, but I also wanted to upgrade it on the everyday user side. Uh, the plans for this have been widespread. Uh, we want to go out on track on it, we wanted to do big miles on it, we wanted to do um, mega miles in a day, um, all sorts of things. As usual, some of those came off, some of those didn't. Uh, we have been to the Isle of Man on it, uh, done some laps of the island, which is fantastic. Rode their road back in perfect comfort, been up to Scotland to do some wild camping on it, been to various commutes um, in the industry, so taking it around to other manufacturers, leaving the bike there whilst taking test bikes away. Uh, and been down to London for various motorcycle industry stuff um, several times on this bike. So how does it perform as an everyday bike? Because yeah, you can go and look at every um, test that you want and they'll tell you what this is like on track or how it's a beast with its 138 brake horsepower and five rider modes and all that palaver. Well, the answer is that as an everyday bike, it's exceptional. Uh, very easy to get on with, the riding position is great, nowhere near as radical as it might look uh, with you looking at the side of the bike here. The relationship to bottom of bum to wrist height is fantastic, and the wide bars are just the right width. You don't have excess weight on your wrists, uh, and there's enough wind blast at speed, 78 mile an hour, 70 miles an hour, obviously, um, to just lift uh, what little weight there is just off your wrist. It's perfectly comfortable. Also, the leg reach from bottom of bum to toe of foot on the footrests is really good as well. It's, you're tucked in just enough for it to feel business-like without it becoming obtrusive. There's no cramping or anything like that. Uh, in terms of what we've put on this bike, if we start with the performance parts, really there's only two bits that have happened to the Speed Triple 1050R. The first are these, the Arrow Cans. Um, what I wanted to do was put on the uh, under seat cans, you can get a low level, um, not quite stubby, but that style of can uh, which comes out on this side of the bike, on, on, the, on the right side as you're sitting on the bike. Um, but I wanted to maintain the under seat look of the, uh, of the, of the Speed Triple. Uh, so I put these on, these cost around £930 which is a lot of money, you know, let's not beat about the bush. 930 quid is a lot of money in anybody's book. And uh, these are arrow cans, they sound fantastic. Can't slam them up in here because we're in the studio, um, but you've got to have a word for it. It sounds like Thor gargling spanners. Just fantastic, really throaty. Makes the bike sound more like a Spitfire. Uh, and the nice thing is when you go on an overrun, so if, you, if you're coming in and then you slam the throttle shut, there's a little bit of unburnt fuel, there's a little bit of popping and banging that goes on, just adds to the essence of what makes a Triumph Speed Triple a Triumph Speed Triple. Um, now when you get those, the second part of this is that you have to have a new engine fueling map um, put into the brain of the computer. Triumph does this all at the same time, obviously. Um, it takes about 10 minutes for the map to be loaded into, uh, into the brains of the motorcycle. And once you've done that, you're good to go. Um, do they make much difference? Uh, in terms of brake horsepower, a couple of brake horsepower here and there. Uh, Feel-wise, uh, it might be psychosomatic. I feel that in the bike itself, on sport mode, um, or track mode, it feels a bit more aggressive, whether that's to do with the sound or not, I can't be 100% sure, probably is the sound, probably something that's going on up in here rather than on here, just feels a bit sharper, but like I say, it could be down to the sound. So performance wise, that's it, I wanted to put a quick shifter on there, but uh, the Triumph don't have the quick shifters at the moment, so we can't put the quick shifter on, uh, that would be purely vanity though, because there's nothing wrong with this gearbox, in fact this gearbox is one of the nicest gearboxes I've ever used, it uses some component parts from the 675R Daytona, uh, which means it's very very slick, uh, clutchless gear changes up are just fantastic, and I can't really see how a quick shifter is of any benefit to what is a road bike, but uh, you know you can buy one, I wanted to try it one, haven't got there yet. 
Um, so in terms of performance, it's the cans and the fueling map. Elsewhere, turn this bike into a bit more of a usable everyday um, motorcycle. I say usable, what I mean is just a bit more practical for what I wanted to do, which is use it every day, go to these meetings, go on big trips. So what do we do? First things first, comfort seat. Um, yeah, I'm just like you, I like to be comfortable on the motorcycle, uh, even the motorcycle that looks like this. And with Triumph you can get these comfort seats, um, quite pricey, can't remember the price off the top of my head but it will come up on the video I'm sure, somewhere around me now. I want to put Gary will put it up. But the comfort seat with the red stitching is on here, uh, it's thicker, it's more plush. Uh, it's good for eight hours in the uh, in the seat. Uh, I can vouch for that. Really, is good for eight hours in the seat. Why not? Why not have a comfort seat if you can have one? Because let's face it, it doesn't look any different to a standard seat, but it is that bit more comfortable. Uh, I really recommend these. Also, grab rail. Grab rail has gone on the bike, not for any pillion reasons. Um, although the grab rail is wonderful, you can get a full gloved hand under here very very easily. Um, and it's really rigid and quite large as well, which is not common uh, for a lot of the uh, aftermarket grab rails. All this stuff is from Triumph's own aftermarket catalogue, by the way. Um, but I put the grab rail on so I can put luggage on, on the bike. I can run a, a pack sack, one of those roll top bags, like an Endurance stand. I can run any Endurance stand 32 litre bag, um, which is a brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. You can get that from twistmoto.co.uk. Do check them out. Uh, the Endurance stand, I think it's called the pack sack. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I've gone 32 litre, you can get a 51 litre one. Basically a soft roll top bag that goes on the back here and you tie it in with rock straps. But without the luggage rack, that would just sag onto the silencers, onto the new cans. Uh, and as you can imagine, these get really, really hot. So this is on here to basically brace it. Strap at the top, you pull the ends up, wonderful. You can carry a lot of luggage on the back of this. Um, tank pad has gone on for the obvious reasons. If you've ever gouged a channel out of your petrol tank, through a button on a jacket or a zip or something, you know, the benefit of these, costs a few quid, whack it on. Uh, I've also had this lip here on the front of the bike, this, this visor, black visor, dark visor. This goes onto the standard white uh, nose cone and it extends it a few inches. I'm guessing that's sort of four, five inches, something like that. It's got an extra kicker lip just here on the top. The idea being that obviously as the wind comes in, it just kicks the wind up a little bit more, makes you a little bit more comfortable. Does it work? I'll be brutally honest with you, I can't tell the difference. Uh, and I thought that given the, the size of the lip here, I would be able to. I can't tell the difference. What I do know is that there are, there's no buffeting at all around the helmet while I'm riding. Um, even at higher speeds, still no buffeting. Really, really nice to be uh, out of the trouble spot of the wind. So if it does work, it works so well I can't tell there's a difference. Um, if it doesn't and you like the look of it, why not have it on? Because you know it just adds a little bit more aggression, I think, to the front of the bike. Um, elsewhere, non-Triumph part on, this, on here. This is the TomTom Tom Rider 400. The TomTom Tom isn't mounted on here, and that's because I wanted to show you this mount. This mount is exceptional. What you can do with this mount, you can rock it backwards um, forwards, so it goes landscape or portrait, um, however you want to do it. And I've fitted the safety, the protection um, package on here, which is basically a lockable um, knob I guess you can call it uh, and that disables the ram mount so nobody can get to the ram mount and then you've got a key here that turns and that basically stops people being able to depress the release catch to take the TomTom -tom off. Uh, this is an additional thing that you can get from TomTom -tom for your Rider 400 or your Rider 410 which are exceptional uh, sat navs, they have a, uh, a thrill mode on there so you can hit the thrill mode once you've got your location, hit the thrill mode and it'll find the most biking friendly twisties on anywhere that you are in Europe. Really recommend them. Uh, I wouldn't want to use any other sat nav at the moment for me. The Rider 400, superseded by the Rider 410 from TomTom, Tom, are brilliant sat navs. Of course, you know, if they want the sat nav and they're bad scroped, they're going to get your sat nav and they could just take the bolts off here of the clamp and nab it away. But in terms of going into a petrol station or a shop or something like that, you know, it's just that peace of mind you don't have to always take your sat-nav with you. If you've got this uh, safety uh, protective kit on and you've locked it, job done. Uh, at least it buys you a few minutes of, of not having to worry about it while you're filling up with fuel. Uh, last couple of things that I've had put on here uh, are the engine protection, um, which are here. Uh, usual sort of thing, very strong metal uh, covered with a nice plastic outer. 
Um, you know, if you come off, you're going to do some damage, but hopefully uh, a lot of the engine, main engine component parts will be okay uh, if you've got those fitted pretty much part of the course so you get those fitted now. If you were looking to buy one of these bikes from a dealer, uh, my own experience, you can probably just wangle those into the sale anyway because they should be putting those on pretty much as standard. I think if you get hold of a motorcycle like this, you know, and you're paying, paying the money, get them to put that on. Um, the thing to tell you about that we've learned is that I've also had the power outlet um, put on to this bike to charge things up like mobile phones, um, sat navs if you need them, um, or uh, Bluetooth communicators. So I wanted a power outlet. Now on the speed triple, on all speed triples, they they are fitted to here um, because there's a handy connection in the loom, wiring loom, where you can fit them in. Real simple to get to, and it bolts onto the bracket, the back of the bracket here. So it's already sort of factored in by Triumph when they build this bike. However, um, this is a powerlet size, and you might be used to that if you have experience with BMWs or something like that. The powerlet is like a half jack size. So your average cigarette lighter plug-in charger won't fit directly into that. You have to get a converter. Um, and I'm a moron. I didn't realize this, basically because I didn't look. Went on a big trip. Uh, was reliant on the fact I'd have to charge whilst I was on this big trip, doing sort of 800 miles a day. And uh, went to plug in, couldn't do it. Had to stop at a truck stop and buy one of these cheap £5.99 uh, push-in powerlet converters. Uh, hence the zip ties and the copious amounts of duct tape that we used to hold it in position because um, you know, we were going at a fair old pace. I just didn't want this to drop off and take whatever I was charging with it. But the cable uh, runs up under the seat and then goes in under the pillion seat. And you've got a pocket under there, usual sort of thing where you can put tools, etc. And the phone or whatever you want to charge can go under there. And it's completely out of the way and everything's connected into charging ply. It works great. It's a nice bit of extra practicality to, uh, to this Triumph Speed Triple. Tyres wise, I've still got the Super Coursers on here um, that I've had throughout so far. They're coming up to a change. We are going to change those because the next phase for this bike is to go out on track. I'm going to take out Donington uh, with RNG for a track day there. So we'll report back to how it feels when it's been out on track after that. But the super courses have done exceptionally well. A lot of great uh, feedback from them. You can really push the bike hard as you would expect from super courses and they're nice and stable as well when you're upright and cruising the autobahns you know, or motorways or whatever. Um, other than that, that's kind of it really in terms of where we are with the Triumph Speed Triple 1050R at the moment. We're coming up to uh, four and a half thousand miles uh, of life with this bike. It's been, like I say, all corners of the country uh, that you can think of, of the UK, um, and I absolutely love it. 11,700 pounds from Triumph for this motorcycle. It might sound like a lot, but you're getting a lot your money there. Um, I know there are other motorcycles out on the market at the moment that are naked, that are big uh, and that are less expensive. Uh, we won't say cheap because they're not cheap motorcycles but less expensive. Um, but for me it's the character of the triple engine that is always the winner. Lots of low down torque, lots of mid-range torque as well and it likes to hang on to the revs. It's kind of the best of all worlds for my riding style and I'm pretty sure that if you tried the Triumph Speed Triple 1050R for yourself, you might find the same thing. This bike can now do all things. It's gone back to the glory days of the 2009 model, and this is arguably one of the best bikes on the market. For me, certainly, it is the best bike on the market right now. Uh, and I wouldn't be saying that after nearly 4,500 miles, knocking on for 5,000 miles soon, um, if I didn't mean it. You know, I wouldn't be riding this bike as much as I am. Hence, it's really dirty state. I will be around to cleaning it soon, but at the moment I'm having too much fun riding it. But that's it for an update for life with the Triumph Speed Triple 1050R here on morebikes.co.uk. Stay tuned for plenty more.